Hey everybody, this is Roberto Blake or RobertoBlake.com helping you create something awesome today. So in today's video, I'm going to talk a little bit about camera aperture for your DSLR camera and how that is part of the exposure triangle and what that all really means. I'm going to try and make it very simple and easy for you to understand even if you're a beginner with DSLR cameras for both video and photography. So when we're talking about aperture, we're talking about your camera lens. We're talking about this right here. So what happens when you have um, quote unquote a wider aperture means that the lens is opening up more like so to f1.8 or if it's going really small like this or closer to um, f22. Now the reason that we go smaller to bigger with those numbers is because they're actually fractions. So if you were at like f2, you're not really at f2, you're, f, you're at f1 over 2, you're at half. So that's part of the reason why those numbers are backwards and why the smaller the aperture is, meaning the smaller this little ring here is, the higher the number is. Because you have to think, 22 slices of a pizza is a lot smaller than half of a pizza. So that just gives you some perspective as to how the math works there. So if you're trying to like figure out the numbers, that's a better way of thinking of it. Now, what this ultimately does is aperture controls really two things if you think about it. Because when it's wide like this, more light can come into the lens. That's the effect that it has on your exposure. The other thing that happens is this uh, creates more shallow depth of field. Shallow depth of field, which I will cover specifically in a whole nother video, is when the subject is in focus and is tack sharp and the background and the rest of the area outside of the focus begins to blur and drop off. So that is shallow depth of field and I'm running some footage here as I talk so that you get a better understanding of exactly what I'm talking about just visually instead of me just trying to explain it you'll get to see some samples here. So that's what shallow depth of field is. It's an effect that many of you want and having lenses that go to wide apertures like the prime 35 millimeter 50 millimeter and 85 millimeter lenses or being able to do f 2.8 with your higher priced zoom lenses like your 24 to 70 is how you get that effect when you have a wide aperture like that because it's letting more light in you have to compensate for the exposure in other ways primary example if you're shooting in daylight and you're shooting photography you might have that wide aperture open because you want that look but you'll also, it'll be so bright that you'll have your ISO down maybe to 100 or 200. And then how do you go ahead and do you cut the rest of the light out when it's super bright outside and you're afraid of your images being overexposed? At that point, you'll have to raise the shutter speed to compensate. Or if that's not an option, let's say you're shooting DSLR video and you know that you have to have a shutter speed of 1 over 50 because you're shooting 24p, then... Um, I would say that if you're shooting 24 frames per second, you have to have a shutter speed of 50. You'll want to get a variable ND filter or an ND filter that can block out some of that light, make the image darker, still allow you to have that wide aperture and that shallow depth of field. This is what I do when I'm shooting some of my cosplay video stuff outdoors or any outdoor events. I'll use an ND filter, usually from Hoya. I'll have links for the stuff in the description below. Hoya makes some really good ones. Um, I wouldn't go with the cheaper ones, and the reason is because when you want that shallow depth of field look, it's also important for you to be able to autofocus properly. If you get a cheap ND filter or even a cheap uh, clear UV haze filter, it can mess up the autofocusing on your lens and it can make it inaccurate. So get the better, uh, more reliable stuff from Tiffin and Hoya rather than an off-label brand. So. Reducing the aperture number down to something like uh, f1.8 or f2.8 can really help you get shallow depth of field, but it can also help you in low light situations to be able to um, you know, go ahead and get uh, more light into the lens and go ahead and get um, some great images. I use this with nightclub photography especially. Uh, where you have low light situations or even for wedding photography when you're indoor at a church or even my indoor product photography here I love to use this lens for that and I'll open up to maybe uh, f2.8 f4 to get what I need sometimes f1.8 
and that will really help you. So primes are great for low light situations because you can get uh, the wider aperture out of them. You can use the higher end telephoto lens like the 24 to 70, 14 to 24, um, you have 70 to 200 at f2.8 and that will help you get uh, wide apertures as well and that shallow depth of field that you need or the ability to get more light in low light situations. I hope you guys understand uh, how aperture works a little better now. I will be covering aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, which all make up the exposure triangle, so make sure you stay tuned for that. I also have a video that goes through the exposure triangle, all three parts of it kind of put together. It will not be a compilation of these videos, it will be its own video. Anyway, uh, if you have questions, leave those in the comment section. I'll try to answer as many of them as I can. Like this video if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Check out the other awesome content on the channel. As always, you guys, thanks so much for watching, and don't forget, create something awesome today.